Good morning, grade fours. I hope that you are having a wonderful Wednesday. Today, we are going to learn how to write a fraction. I hope that you've already written the date and the heading and underlined them nicely and that you're ready to learn. Let's just quickly do some recap from yesterday. Yesterday, we learned how to work with a fraction. We learned how to take a shape and to divide it into pieces. Now, sometimes that means that the shape is only divided into that number of pieces. But sometimes, like you saw in the tricky exercise 91B, it was divided into lots of squares. And then you had to take that shape and divide it into what they asked you to. So let's look at that first one for picture A. It said, color in one third of A blue. So if you take A, Altogether, there's actually 60 blocks, okay? And if we had to divide 60 by 3, you would get 20. So we know that we need to color 20 blocks in, but you can also do it this way. So if you need to divide that block into three equal pieces, you can see that across the row, there are six pieces. Can you see that? One, two, three, four, five, six. Then if you take the first two, and you draw a big line like I've done, that means that is one third of the whole shape. And then after the next two, there's another line. Okay, and that's the next third. So altogether, there are three thirds. One big rectangle can be divided into three equal pieces. Okay, and it's this, a similar thing for B. So we can take that whole rectangle and divide it into four equal pieces. And and if you see there, all of those miniature rectangles are the same shape and they all build up to make the bigger shape. The same for D. Now, do you think it matters which way round we do our lines, whether we do them sideways like I've done or whether we do them um, straight up? No, as long as the same number of um, squares is evident. And for E, it would have just been one of those triangles, one of those big triangles would be colored in. Okay, I have a tricky question for you now. If I take this last, um, it looks like a kite, this shape, is this one half? What do you think? Well, I'd like to tell you that it is not a half. Remember that a fraction is an equal part of a whole. So just like before, when we learned about the heart and we saw, you know, the top half of a heart is not the same as the bottom half of a heart. This is the same kind of thing. A half would only be the, the left or the right hand side there because they look exactly the same. It would not be the top or the bottom. Okay. Now let's get learning. Can you please go with me to page 161? We are going to learn how to write a fraction. Okay, so there, the example is there for us. We have got one shape, one circle. How many pieces is it divided into? Did you say four? I hope so. And how many pieces are colored in pink? One, well done. And how many pieces are white? There are three. Okay, now we can use that information to write a fraction. Uh, you can read with me. It says the number of equal parts that the shape is divided into. So we can write that. We can also write the fraction that is shaded in words and as a fraction. And we can write the fraction that is unshaded in words and as a fraction. So we've actually just said those things. So number one. The number four is the number of pieces that you see there all together. So that's the total number of equal pieces that a shape is divided into. And then number two is one quarter. You must learn how to spell it. Or one fourth. And it is shown as one on top of a four. So we say that as one quarter. And that is the bit that is colored in pink. So there's one piece that is colored in. So that is your top number, your numerator. And the four is the denominator, and that is the total number of pieces in that shape. Now we can write the fraction that is unshaded, so the white pieces. So your denominator stays the same. That's the number of pieces that they, that they are in the whole shape. So it's four. That's your bottom number. And then your top number is the number three. Why is it three and not one anymore? Because how many white pieces are there? There are three. 
So white pieces or unshaded. Okay, now you're going to do exercise 92A, so please write that down. And then you're going to um, answer the questions. We'll do number one together, and then you're going to do number two to 12 on your own. So it says there, for each shape, write A, the number of equal parts that the shape is divided into, B, the fraction that is shaded in words and as a fraction, and C, the fraction that is unshaded, or the white bits, in words and as a fraction. Okay, so let's do the first one together. So you're going to write number one, and then you're going to do A, B, and C for number one. So what is the number of equal parts that the shape is in, divided into? So you're going to count however many pieces are in that shape. So let's count together. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so your answer is going to be five. You can write that in words or as the number, it's okay. And then you're going to do number B. The fraction that is shaded in words and as a fraction. So first write it in words. So you have got how many purple pieces? How many shaded pieces? I hope you said one. And how many pieces is your denominator? Five. So your answer is one fifth or one on top of a five. Okay. And then now you're going to do C. The fraction that is unshaded in words and as a fraction. So you're going to count the number of white pieces, which is one, two, three, four. And so your answer is four fifths or four on a five. Okay. Now, if you ever want to check that your answers are correct, you're going to add the numerator um, from the unshaded and the shaded, and it should give you your number your denominator. So our answer for B was one fifth and your answer for C was four fifths and one plus four is five which is your total. Remember that five fifths is the same as one whole. Now you're going to do the same for number two. You're going to do A. You're going to tell me how many squares are there in that whole square. Then you're going to tell me how many pieces are purple, and you're going to write, write that as a fraction in words and as a fraction. And then you're going to write how many white pieces, how many unshaded pieces. You're going to write that in words and as a fraction. Okay, everybody, have fun doing that. Now we're going to go to page 162 together, and we're going to learn okay, how to look at a fraction not just of a shape, but of a group of objects. Okay, so let's have a look at this example. We have got five circles. Two of them are shaded, three of them are unshaded. So it says, how many objects are there? Write the shaded part as a fraction, write the unshaded part as a fraction. So let's look at the answer. It says there, how many circles are there? We know that there are five circles. How many are green? Two fifths. So you must write two. So you write two as your top number, your numerator, because that is how many there are. There are two. And you write your denominator as five because there are five circles altogether. So two out of the five circles are green or shaded. And then for the next one, it says write the unshaded part. So how many are white or unshaded? And that is three. So it'd be three fifths are unshaded. Okay, let me just show you a quick example over here. We have got some bananagram uh, or Scrabble letters. Okay, some of them are blank and some of them have got letters on. How many Scrabble pieces do we have all together? You can count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so that's going to be your denominator. Seven is going to be the bottom number for everything. And how many blank pieces do you have? You have got three of them. So that written as a fraction is three sevenths, three on top of a seven. And how many uh, ones with letters do we have? Can you guess? 
Okay, we've got four. So that would be your top number, your numerator, which is four sevenths. Okay, remember that your denominator is the same, whether you've got blank or whether you've got color or not. And if you ever want to check, like us, we could say three sevenths plus four sevenths is seven sevenths, which is my whole. Altogether, there are seven. Okay. You are now going to do exercise 92B on your own. We can do number one together and then you can do number two to nine on your own. So it says for each question, write A, the number of objects, B, the shaded fraction as a fraction, and C, the unshaded fraction as a fraction. Okay, so you're lucky here. You don't have to write the fractions in words. You can just write the fraction. So for A, it says the number of objects. So how many triangles do you have there? Remember, whether they're upside down or the right way around, they're still there. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So you've got six there. So the answer for A is six. And then for B, the unshaded fraction as a fraction. Okay, so that's the white pieces. So how many white triangles do you have? You have got two. So please don't just write two there. You must write two sixths. Okay, because you've got one, two, three, four, five, six as your denominator and two as your numerator. And then for C, um, oh, sorry, the shaded fraction as a fraction. So that was actually the green. So B is going to be one, two, three, four. So the answer for B is four sixths. And then the answer for C is the unshaded fraction, and that is two sixths. Okay, if you have any questions, please ask. Um, don't be shy. And yeah, you're going to do now for question two, you're going to write the answers for A, B, and C. For question three, you're going to do A, B, and C, and all the way up to question nine. Don't forget to rule off when you're done. Have a great time working hard, everyone. Bye. Mm -hmm.